Hello everyone, welcome to PlatformCon 2024. We are at a pivotal moment in tech comparable to the dawn of the iPhone or cloud computing. Today we'll explore how platform engineering will evolve with the advent of large language models, focusing on opportunities, challenges, and strategies. My name is Chiravik Vital, and I am the SVP of engineering at Lendistry, a small business financial services provider. We serve minority and underserved businesses. Over the past few months, the team at Lendistry has built several generative AI apps for our lending business. Generative AI represents a major shift in technology, as Jensen Huang of NVIDIA likened it to the iPhone's impact. The market performance of AI-centric companies like NVIDIA demonstrates this. Generative AI transforms our interaction with technology, allowing for creativity, problem solving, and reasoning that were once unique to humans. This is the ladder of tech evolution from the old school mainframes to the AI wave. Back when the cloud rolled in, platform engineers had to level up with stuff like Kubernetes, containers, CICD, and IAC. Generative AI gives us new ways of building apps, and that needs new kinds of dev tools and engineering practices. AI apps are in production already. Take Klarna for example. They're running a customer service chatbot using GPT-4 that is already doing the work of 700 customer service agents. Khan Academy has a Khan Migo AI app, which helps children enhance their learning for, over what they learned in school. Stripe has used uh, LLMs to streamline user experience and detect fraud. And Harvey's legal AI is empowering professionals with deep legal insight. All these AI solutions powered by LLMs are developed rapidly, a process that wants to years. This new style of writing AI apps has led to the rise of the AI engineer. In the past, the traditional machine learning life cycle was a linear path from data to modeling and finally to product integration. It involved a lot of manual processes, training, evaluating, and inferencing, which could take months. Plus, the, the ML engineer had to keep up with the latest research and re constantly read papers. Contrast that with the AI engineer. The process has become very cyclical, the emphasis on iterating quickly. We're seeing products built and deployed in days, not months, thanks to the advent of LLM APIs and wrappers that makes integration seamless. The focus has also shifted from the heavy lifting of model training to evaluating models and crafting prompts that get the best out of these AI tools. The API that enables a lot of the productivity of the AI engineer is the so-called chat completion API, which was pioneered by OpenAI. On the left, we have the API request. It's a simple REST API that tells the LLM what we're asking for. We authenticate with an API key ensuring secure access. And in the data payload, we specify the model. This model version will dictate the capabilities and the speed of response. We also specify a user role as well as the system role. In this case, we're asking this LLM to pretend that it's a financial services industry expert. In the prompt, this is what we're asking the AI to consider, and the inference parameters like temperature and frequency penalty control the creativity and the length of the response. And on the right, we see the response from the LLM with the message that's the AI's answer to the prompt. Also crucial is the usage information, including the cost in terms of tokens, because this is what it costs the, uh, the application to make this API call. Let's see what are the challenges with even this simple API. One of the first problems an AI engineer encounters when using the LLM API is the context limit. LLMs have limits on prompt length, which can affect the context that they can consider. Stochastic, stochasticity is a fancy way of just saying there's a certain level of unpredictability in the AI response. So each time you send the same prompt, you could potentially get a different response. And here, crafting the right prompt is an art. It requires understanding the nuances of the AI. Hallucinations are 
when the model generates plausible answers, but they're actually fake or nonsense. So we just need to ground the AI in, in reality with some rigorous evaluation. Safety and security are two sides of the same coin. On the safety side, we're looking at alignment with human values, avoiding abuse, bias, and ensuring fairness. And for security, we need to guard against data breaches and privacy issues using standards like the OWASP top 10 for LLM to guide us. Let's say we're building a, a chatbot which helps our customers apply for loans. So the, the user enters the chat and says, how can I apply for a small business loan? Now this, the LLM app, the chatbot, uh, first will construct a prompt uh, tailored to meet the, uh, to get the most informative response from the AI. And this is where prompt engineering is crucial. Then the API calls upon additional context relevant to the query. It might pull from a vector store or a knowledge graph, uh, enhancing the AI's understanding with additional information. Then the AI or LLM performs inference and based on the prompt and context, it generates a response. But we don't just take the AI's first answer as the final truth. Evaluation models step in to assess the relevance, quality, and accuracy of the AI response. And before we send anything back to the user, we run the response through safety checks. There are checks for content, moderation, bias, and adherence to ethical guidelines. The resulting response is then delivered back to the user. Apart from the problems I already highlighted, there are key architectural choices that the AI engineer has to make, which influences the, the labor and the toil that the platform engineer has to go through. For instance, if there's function calling, which enhances the AI's ability to invoke uh, actions in the real world, uh, that, include, that increases the complexity and risk of the project. Uh, the, the type of the project, whether it's an AI agent or a chatbot, whether using one model or multiple, how you introduce new information to the LLM, whether RAG or fine tuning, and whether it's internal or external facing. If there's external facing, then the blast radius of an inappropriate response from the LLM is gonna be quite big. As we roll out the AI applications into production, several key concerns must be at the forefront. The first is model explosion. The AI engineer has the possibility of hundreds of different models they can use to do for the task. And uh, not all of them are useful or safe or appropriate. And so they need to be guided reliably there. Then there's reliability in cost management. It's critical to ensure that the AI systems are reliable and produce consistent results. And, and we must also manage their costs. We have to continuously evaluate how well the prompts are performing and how the models are responding to ensure they meet our standards. And the AI must not only function well, but also safely, out of avoiding the propagation of false information, hallucinations, or biases. And finally, we need robust governance to ensure that the AI aligns with the enterprise's goals and ethical standards. And then security, especially data privacy and protection is also crucial. The platform engineer uh, can use their uh, familiar tools like containers, CI, CD, um, and observability. There's some slight changes. For example, the Kubernetes might need to be GPU aware. Uh, CI, CD might need to uh, invoke evaluation models. If observability, you need to start like monitoring token counts and also the quality of the responses. When we put together the solution for an AI powered application, uh, there are several building blocks. The first, we have the model catalog. This is our vetted list of AI models, like a library from which the developers can choose the best tool for the job. The API proxy um, intercepts every call to the LLM, and it's like a gatekeeper. So we can implement policy-based controls here. We can do uh, switch the model uh, in the middle of the uh, process, and uh, we can even do uh, logging and uh, cost monitoring here. Evaluation and guardrails is where we embed the safety features and ensure the integrity of the AI uh, app. For optimization, we are tweaking the finer points of our prompts, uh, their execution. Uh, we can do caching and batching and 
and other modes of cost management. If we choose to uh, run our own LLM, then uh, we have to worry about things like scaling the LLM and handling upgrades and then storing the layer weights. RAG support is where uh, this is how we add context or add new information to the LLM. Uh, we could do this or do fine tuning. And this is uh, usually involves an entirely uh, new infrastructure, usually managed by data engineers. When you put together this AI application and put it to production, uh, the platform engineer has to collaborate with a number of other roles. For example, the AI engineer, the data engineer, and the SecOps. The data engineer might be uh, dealing with uh, safety and guardrails, the RAG backend. The AI engineer, of course, is tuning the prompts and building the eval suite. And then SecOps is building, you know, uh, assessing the risk of the LLM, uh, ensuring supply chain security, and building the safety runbook. The platform engineer could offer, deploy, and monitor the model catalog, uh, deploy and configure the API proxy, uh, help with uh, LLM hosting, scaling, and, um, and and performance, as well as you know the regular three pillars of observability, where you have to add the um, the monitoring of the quality of the of the response, as well as the uh, the requests and responses from the uh, LLM. Uh, in my experience or in our experience at Lendis we have found the uh, platform engineers also leveraging the LLM uh, like ChatGPT or GitHub Copilot uh, to make their jobs simpler. For example, they use uh, these tools to generate uh, infrastructure as code like Terraform, um, build automation scripts, and also troubleshoot errors or demystify you know, logs from the application. They also use it to correlate uh, production issues to code. So we can use, they use the Gen AI to uh, locate the probable problem areas in the code. And then uh, we're thinking of building an expert system where we can ask the uh, LLM to reason on incidents and tickets based on prior uh, similar resolutions. While it's hard to make precise predictions, uh, just given the track record of the past year, we can make some more you know, extrapolate from the past year. For instance, proprietary models will get smarter, faster, and safer, probably by an order of magnitude. Uh, open source models like Llama will get good enough for a lot of use cases and uh, give an avenue for AI engineers to build uh, proprietary uh, apps. Uh, AI engineers will go multimodal, leveraging uh, vision, um, multimedia, and audio. Uh, in their applications. And uh, we will also find the rise of uh, non-programmers who are programming using uh, code generation from the LLMs. Uh, this will democratize development, making it accessible to uh, people without programming skills, but that also means that platform engineers have to manage uh, the code that is generated by these uh, teams. Uh, these trends will have far-reaching applications for how we code, uh, manage, and secure our systems. And embracing these changes will be essential for staying at the forefront of platform engineering in the era of AI applications. I hope uh, you enjoyed this talk, and I hope you have a great rest of PlatformCon 2024. Thank you.